The GCF stands for greatest common factor. If we take apart each word, we can divide greatest as largest, common as the same, and in math, factor is a part of the multiplication expression. So for example, if I had 2 times 5 is equal to 10, 2 and 5 are called factors of 10. More specifically, we call 2 and 5 factor pairs of 10. There are three methods to finding the GCF of two numbers. The first method is listing factors for each number. For 12 and 18, if I wanted to find the GCF, I would list the factor pairs for each number in least to greatest order. So for 12, 1 times 12 gives me 12. 2 times 6 also gives me 12. And finally, the last factor pair is 3 times 4. So on my list of factors for 12 as 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. We're going to follow the same thing for 18. We have 1 and 18. 2 and 9, and 3 and 6. Now that we have listed all the factor pairs for each number, we can compare the list with each other. Since GCF stands for greatest common factor, we're going to look for a common factor between both lists. Both of them has a 1 in it, a 2, a 3, and a 6. Of those common factors, the greatest one is 6, so therefore the GCF of 12 and 18 is 6. The second method to finding the GCF of numbers is the ladder method. In order to use the ladder method, you have to know what prime numbers are. Prime numbers are numbers that are only divisible by itself and 1. So I've started a list of 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and 13. There are an infinite number of prime numbers, but we just listed a few to begin with. When using the ladder method, you put the two numbers that you want to find the GCF of in a ladder, and it's basically an upside division problem. You have to think of what prime number goes into both 12 and 18. In this case, 2 goes into both 12 and 18, so I put a 2 on the outside. 12 divided by 2 is 6, 18 divided by 2 is 9. We continue the ladder because 6 and 9, there's a prime number that goes into both of them, and that is 3. So I put 3 here. 6 divided by 3 is 2, 9 divided by 3 is 3. I know to stop my ladder work right now because there's no prime numbers that go into both 2 and 3. To find the GCF of 12 and 18, we simply multiply all the numbers on the left side of the ladder. 2 times 3 is 6. So the GCF of 12 and 18 is 6. Some of you might have noticed that 3 also goes into 12 and 18. When we use 3 here, we will still get the same answer. The latter will look a little differently, but on the left side, you will still be multiplying 2 and 3 together to get the same GCF of 6. Let's move on to a ladder method where you have to find the GCF of 24, 40, and 72, three numbers. We use the ladder method the same way. We think of what prime number goes into all three of these. Since they're all even, I know that 2 goes into each one. Following with the division, the quotient for each one is 12, 20, and 36. Since I still can continue, I'm going to continue by dividing all three numbers by 2, with quotients being 6, 10, and 18. Continue one last time, 2 goes into all three numbers, 3, 5, and 9. Since no prime number goes into 3, 5, and 9, I stop my ladder here. Then, I take all the numbers on the left side, multiply them together, and get a product of 8. So therefore, the GCF of 24, 40, and 72 is 8. For the final method, I like to call it the common sense method. Um, you're going to ask, what is the highest number that can go into the numbers? If you think about it, what is the highest number that you can think of that goes into both 12 and 18? The answer is 6. Some people find this method beneficial for them because it's the quickest method. However, you have to know what number goes into both. Of all the three methods that I have shown, any method will work, where the first method is the longest because you have to list all the factors, the second one is a shortcut using the ladder method, and the last one is using a little brain power to figure out what number goes into all of them. You can try now with the other previous examples and see if you can come up with a GCF and see if this method works best for you.
To find the GCF of variable expressions, let's take a look at a couple of examples. The GCF of x cubed and x to the fifth is x to the third. The GCF of y to the 20th and y to the 16th is y to the 16th. And finally, the GCF of x to the 17th and x to the 8th is x to the 8th. If you look at all three examples, can you find a pattern where I determine the GCF of the variable expressions? If you notice, each time I use the same variable as well as the lowest exponent. To find the GCF of variable expressions, you use the variable with the lowest exponent. The mathematical reason for this is, let's take a look at x cubed and x to the fifth. x to the fifth can be written as x squared times x to the third. If we're comparing it with x to the third, remember this is x to the fifth, GCF represents the greatest common factor. Since these are the factors of x to the fifth, do you see a commonality between the two? I have x cubed that is the same as the x cubed here, and therefore, that is why x cubed is the GCF of x to the third and x to the fifth. To find the GCF of numerical and variable expressions, what we do is we take a look at the numerical parts first, and then the variable part second. If you look at 4 and 12, we can use any of the methods that shown before. The GCF of 4 and 12 is 4. And then ignoring the numerical parts, the GCF of x and x is x. We can also find the GCF for three numbers um, with variables as well. We're going to do it the same way as before. The GCF for 3, 9, and 21 is 3. And the GCF for x cubed, x squared, and x is x. So finding the GCF for numerical and variable expressions, we treat the two methods separately. We look at the numerical parts first, and then we look at the variable parts second. There will be times where you need to find the GCF of expressions where you have a monomial multiplied by a binomial. If you look at our previous example when we did 4x and 12x, the GCF was 4x. The next example that I have after is very similar, but instead of having the monomial x, I replaced it with the binomial x plus 7. We actually figure out the GCF the same way as we did before when it was just a monomial with a variable x. We still compare 4 and 12 to find out that the GCF is 4. And then we take a look at both binomials. Both binomials are in common with each other, so I can take that binomial to the first power. Let's take a look at this example, a more complicated binomial multiplied with a monomial expression. 24 and 8, the GCF between 24 and 8 is 8. Then we take a look at the first binomial, x plus 4 and x plus 4, they're in common with each other, so I write x plus 4 as part of my GCF. Now we take a look at the last binomial, I have x minus 7 cubed and x minus 7 squared. We're going to take that binomial, and remember we're going to take the lowest exponent, so it's raised to the second power. 